It's Monday morning, 6 a.m. The employees at a road station have just arrived for work. But overnight, there has been a problem. One of the trucks parked for maintenance has been leaking oil. With nowhere to go, that pollution could end up in a storm drain. It's important to know what to do to clean it up and keep it from happening again. Today we visit a road station where all BMPs are in place. It's not difficult. It's as easy as good housekeeping. Christine Sloan, Program Coordinator for the Watershed Protection Program. And I'm Tony Barry, a Civil Engineer with the County of San Diego. Today we're going to be talking about housekeeping and spill management BMPs. So Tony, what is housekeeping and why is it so important for pollution prevention? Well Christine, housekeeping is a source control BMP that prevents pollutants from entering stormwater at the source. It's much easier to prevent the pollutants from entering the stormwater than it is to try and clean it up afterwards. That's why source control BMPs and specifically housekeeping are so important on a site like this one. So what are some specific housekeeping BMPs? Covering waste and materials, spill kits, placing drip pans under vehicles, and other procedures that would prevent the pollutants from entering the stormwater. There are a lot of housekeeping BMPs, which is why we are here today at Division 2 Road Station. There are so many activities that happen here that could potentially pollute stormwater. However, the road crew does a great job of preventing pollution at its source. So let's head over to our first location. So spill stations should be centrally located on a facility, and if you, if you have a very large facility, you should have multiple spill stations set up. So Tony, can you tell me what we uh, have in these containers here? Certainly. Let's start with uh, this over here. This is a spill kit. Okay. So inside the spill kit, the first thing that you'll find is a spill kit information manual that should give you the information necessary to contain and clean up any type of spill. And also you'll have the materials in the spill kit that will help you with the cleanup. And you can see here we have absorbent socks, absorbent pillows, and some absorbent towels. And of course, once uh, the spill's contained and cleaned up, you're definitely going to want to dispose of them properly, and so some bags are provided. So the next container, which is clearly labeled new spill absorbent, contains spill absorbent. For example, say I had had a spill and I swept it up into this pan, what do I do once it's used? So once you've properly collected all of the used spill absorbent, you would want to dispose of it properly in the can clearly marked used spill absorbent. Great. All right, so what do we have in this container? So Christine, on this site we have a lot of vehicles. Okay. So anywhere you have a lot of vehicles, you want to make sure that you don't end up with uh, the oil that drips off of the vehicles getting into runoff. A key consideration is anytime that you use a drip pan under a vehicle to contain oil, you want to make sure that you clean it properly before you return it to use. Did you know any oil, chemical, or waste that is released in any manner constitutes a spill? There is no minimum amount. Clean up all spills when they happen. The spill kit should be clearly labeled and easily accessible because every drop counts. So here we are at our next location and we are at a wash rack. A wash rack is basically a car wash, but it's for fleet vehicles of any size. So you can have a small car all the way up to a street sweeper. And you can pull up here and wash your vehicle. A vehicle will pull in and the operator will use the hose to wash off any sediment, debris, or pollutants that would otherwise possibly end up in stormwater runoff. The water then carries the pollutants and sediment and debris and is directed by berms that are part of the facility into this French drain. The French drain is an inlet that carries sediment, pollutants and runoff across the way to the settling pond. And they pretty much stay here until such time as we can dispose of them properly. And is there any concern about the standing water? Just like anywhere where you have water standing for longer than 96 hours, you want to make sure you have a vector control plan in place to ensure that you're not promoting the breeding of mosquitoes. So since we're talking about maintenance, what do we do about the sediment that was left with inside the berms? Well, Christine, just like any BMP, we're going to need to maintain this regularly. We're going to need to come in here and shovel and sweep up the sediment and debris and dispose of it properly. And are all wash racks designed the same way as this one? No, in fact they're not, and we're going to be looking at a different design here in a few moments. Did you know, once most of the wash water has been collected from a wash rack, some residual amounts of debris or sediment may be left on paved surfaces. Sweeping the area would avoid leaving behind solids that could wash into the storm drain at a later time. Here we are at another wash rack location. Tony, can you tell me the difference between this wash rack and the last one we saw? Certainly. This is a covered location with a power washer and an oil water separator. 
What's an oil water separator? It's a treatment control BMP that separates oil and sediment from the water, which then drains to the sanitary sewer. Is there any kind of maintenance that's involved with this? Yeah, a private contractor will come through on a regular basis, gather the sediment and oil, and dispose of it properly. And what kind of equipment do we normally wash here? This site was specifically designed to degrease engines prior to maintenance. But if you remember, downstream of the previous wash rack, there was a settling basin. A factor truck comes in on a regular basis and gathers up that water, brings it to this location and runs it through the oil water separator to filter out the sediment and debris. Wash racks are a great place to not only rinse off equipment and vehicles, but also to dump mop water, rinse off floor mats, or dispose of other stormwater discharges. Depending on the size of the wash rack, even buses and trucks can be washed properly. Wash racks should be burned, covered, and fully contained. If you are washing equipment or vehicles without using a wash rack, you must use the proper BMPs to contain the wash liquid so that no pollutants discharge into the storm drain. Remember, discharging wash liquid onto pavement will pollute stormwater, even if it doesn't flow directly into a drain. Here we are at a rumble strip. Tony, can you tell me what is a rumble strip? Yeah, Christine, a rumble strip is a BMP that basically consists of uh, evenly spaced metal bars whose purpose is to shake the tires of vehicles and loosen and remove any debris, sediment, or mud that's attached. They're a good BMP to place anywhere where you have a lot of vehicle traffic expected and you have a transition from a dirt area to a paved area. And what about cleaning? Uh, we'd come in and regularly maintain it and we'd either sweep out the debris or shovel it out and dispose of it properly. And are these placed flat on the ground? Well, they're placed flat on the ground, but that's not all you need to do. You need to ensure that they're anchored in place securely because you're gonna have a lot of vehicle traffic and you definitely don't want them to be moving. Did you know sometimes excess sediment can extend beyond the rumble strip? One quick fix is to level out the ground around the rumble pad and redistribute stone or crushed aggregate around the strip. Now we're at a hazardous waste storage unit. At this unit, we store wet and dry hazardous waste materials. So Tony, what's the purpose of a hazardous waste storage unit? The purpose is to shelter the hazardous waste to ensure that it doesn't come in contact with stormwater. So what are some key features here at this storage unit? This is a secure facility with a roof. It has a floor with a firm lip around it to ensure that should there be any spills of the liquid hazardous waste, they'll be contained. We also have nearby a spill kit so that if there are any spills, we can clean them up. And then what about the labels? As you can see, all of the hazardous wastes are clearly labeled, they're segregated, and we have the proper signage. And then why do we have a barrel out here outside? That barrel was dropped off today and that shouldn't be there. We need to place that inside as quick as possible. Could you help me grab it really quick? Sure. All right. It's important not to mix hazardous waste with non-hazardous materials. Label containers properly. And remember, absorbent materials used to clean up hazardous substances are now hazardous waste and must be disposed of properly. So here we are at another location at our facility. Tony, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on here? Yeah, this is an asphalt stockpile. This is a location where the road crews store asphalt for use later in filling potholes. Here we're stockpiling asphalt, but the stockpile could be dirt, sand, gravel, even metal materials. In this location, we're doing two different things. First, we have tarps, which are used to keep the rain from coming into contact with the stockpiles. And we also have a permanent containment structure built in order to trap any uh, contaminated stormwater. I see that we have K-rails and berms. Is that always the case? That's not always the case. This is a permanent stockpile solution. It's more common to find a temporary stockpile area. In those locations, it's usually natural ground. And there you would use either rock socks or staked fiber rolls in order to contain any contaminated runoff. So we're at our next location where we're storing materials. Tony, what are we storing here? We're storing scrap metal and we're storing it in these bins. These bins are great for a long-term storage solution. Unfortunately, they're really hard to cover, which is why we have to provide a canopy to keep the rainwater out. So why don't we use tarps? Tarps are really hard to tie down to these bins and then it would make it really inaccessible. They also have a tendency to blow away with the wind and to fill up with rainwater and then fail. That reminds me of some general housekeeping tips. Trash or recycling containers should always have lids or be covered. They should be accessible where people will be able to use them. And the same is true for cigarette receptacles. Those should be placed where people are likely to smoke. Remember, all receptacles should remain closed when not in use. Protect stockpiles and construction materials from not only rain, but wind as well. Store them under a roof or a secured impermeable tarp, but only use a tarp for temporary storage. 
Avoid stockpiling materials near storm drains, inlets, gullies, or streams. If you use portable toilets at your facility, ensure you have the proper secondary containment in case of a spill. If secondary containment is not available for your toilet, then have a large spill kit nearby. Clean and inspect the toilets regularly and have them serviced immediately when full. If your site generates kitchen grease, it is important to properly store the grease in clean and covered grease bins. Inspect your grease storage areas often and clean up spills immediately. So now we're at a repair bay at one of our garages. This is where we bring county vehicles for regular maintenance. So Tony, what kind of pollutants would we expect to find at a site like this? Well, we can expect to see grease, oil, gasoline, and other chemicals, as well as metal shavings and assorted dirt and debris. Because this is an indoor facility, we want to keep the pollutants inside and not let them get out where they can get into the stormwater runoff. So what kind of BMPs would we use to ensure that they didn't leave the site? We definitely want to make sure that we have a spill kit nearby. We can use rags, drip pans, and we want to make sure that the floor is swept regularly and we want to keep all work areas clean. Looks like there's a lot of liquids that's laying around here in the garage. Would you be willing to show me what to do in case of a spill? Sure, let's do a little demonstration. So Tony, looks like we have a spill here. What do we need to do? First thing we want to do is contain the spill to stop it from moving. Then we want to go ahead and use absorbent to absorb the spill. Once the absorbent's had time to pick up the spill, we can then use a dustpan and brush to pick up the absorbent. Remember, stop if there's a drop. Don't wait. Clean up spills immediately. If rags or absorbent materials are not available, you can use paper towels. But like other materials used for cleanup, towels must be disposed of properly. Add practice spill prevention. Place drip pans beneath all potential drip and spill locations during vehicle maintenance. Now we're at a county fueling facility. Tony, can you tell me what are some key stormwater considerations when it comes to a fueling facility? And at this location, we want to keep diesel and gasoline out of the stormwater. We do that by covering the pump area, providing clearly marked and easily accessible shutoff switch should there be an emergency, and providing all the major constituents of a spill station. Remind me again, what's in a spill station? You have your spill kit, new and used absorbent, and a dustpan and brush. And then what would we do if there was a storm drain nearby? We would want to berm in the fueling area. In case there's a spill, it'll get contained within the bermed area. And was there anything specific that you wanted to remind people? Yeah, when most people go to a gas station and they see a garbage can, they throw their garbage in it. We want to make sure the absorbent cans are clearly marked and that staff are well aware that these are for absorbent only so that they don't end up filled with garbage. So Tony, what else do we need to cover? Well, we haven't talked about parking lot sweeping. Oh, what do we need to know about parking lot sweeping? Sediment debris and other pollutants can build up in parking lots, so we need to make sure that they get swept regularly. Parking lot sweeping can be done manually or using a street sweeper. There are many different types of sweepers, such as vacuum or broom sweepers, and you will need to choose the sweeper best suited for your specific parking lot. Your facility has a predetermined parking lot sweeping priority, but it's important to sweep as often as necessary to keep your paved surfaces clean. Keeping a maintenance yard clean involves common sense and being prepared. Be careful to prevent spills. Plus, know the correct way to store and use materials. If we maintain a clean, spill-free work zone, we can help keep our waterways clear and clean. You know, Tony, there's a lot going on here at this site. That's right, Christine, and we've seen a whole lot of really good housekeeping source control BMPs. Remember, some simple steps to keep a neat and tidy facility can really make your job easier in the long run and prevent pollution at the source. If you'd like more information on source control BMPs, go to projectcleanwater.org, and we'll see you next time.